there, everyone. I'm Ashley Hunt, Senior Project Management Instructor here at Stormwind Studios. And a lot of times I focus my blogs on things like exam tips or what to expect. But this particular blog, I really just want to focus in on a tool or technique that you can actually use in the real world to help you out. This blog is all about why a fishbone diagram can help solve risk and quality problems. Now, a lot of you that I talk to say, hey, yeah, we use fishbone diagrams. We use brainstorming to try and figure out what's going on with our risk or quality. So a lot of this probably won't be very surprising to you. But the benefit of utilizing brainstorming with something like an Ishikawa or fishbone diagram can really go a long way to identify root causes of risk and quality problems. Certainly with brainstorming, you're going to have to be working with your experts, your team, to try and de determine major causes of risk and quality issues. And sometimes those are industry specific. Sometimes major causes are based on industry, like technical or mechanical or machinery or something like that. So you would better know which categories to use based on your industry. But the people who do the work know the work. And so they're going to be the best people to reach out to, to utilize brainstorming and try and figure out not just the categories, but what the potential root causes could be and work through the progression of a breakdown like an Ishikawa diagram so that you can graphically represent the progression of possible root causes. That's going to allow you to apply the best response, not just to the risk or the quality problem, but to the root cause and make sure that we're looking for the most effective root causes. We know that there are things like the proximate cause, which is the most obvious, could be an intermediate or organizational cause. So the role of a fishbone diagram is to really help you see the categories that are possible. Why is it called an Ishikawa diagram? Well, Dr. Karu Ishikawa, who pioneered quality management processes in the 60s in the Kawasaki shipyards and the process has become one of the basic founding fathers of modern management as far as quality is concerned. So you know when we go through the quality section of class, we talk about Ishikawa diagrams and we combine that with folks like Deming, Duran, Crosby, and Taguchi. The first basic concept of working backward through a problem was seen in the 1920s. However, the Ishikawa diagram was definitely, definitely used. And one of the most famous cases of it was when Mazda Motors used an Ishikawa diagram in the development of the Mazda Miata. So large organizations, manufacturing or not, see the value in the Ishikawa diagram, but it's got a lot of names, doesn't it? It's got Ishikawa, fishbone diagram, root cause diagram, cause and effect diagram, and sometimes I even call it a fishikawa, just so everybody knows in class that you can tie that fishbone to the Ishikawa as far as exam purposes are concerned. But let's take a look at common categories of breakdown so that you can compartmentalize and start looking for root causes. These are the most common. That doesn't mean they're the end-all, be-all. It could be definitely based on your industry. But people, are our folks creating defects or having risk follow them around? Like, let's figure out if this is a people problem. What about the methods that we're using or the machinery or the materials or how we measure performance? Maybe it's just the environment. But like I said, you can use any big categories that you want to to try and narrow down the reasons why a risk event could occur or a quality problem or defect has occurred. Now, this is just a basic kind of cool animation of a fishbone diagram as we work backward through the problem. The effect could very well be low customer satisfaction. Well, one of the categories could be high pricing, ineffective marketing, cost of materials, could be based on poor support by our people, maybe wrong answers, long hold time, we've all experienced that, right? And maybe fee structures. Maybe it's a very well low quality product. Well, why? Poor materials, bad design, incompetent employees. And so we start to look at what's the big effect? Well, our customer satisfaction rates are down as an organization. What would cause that? 
because that's a risk. And the cool thing about a fishbone diagram is you can either look at an effect that's actually occurred and work backward to try and figure out how to fix it, like corrective action, or you can look forward into the future and say, how can we prevent low customer satisfaction? How can we prevent defects in our materials or our equipment or our final product or service? So it's really a forward backward type of thing and you can really narrow it down and say, all right, high pricing is just too big of a concept. Where's that money? Why is it so expensive? Ineffective marketing, cost of materials. Okay, can we get lower cost of materials? Let's break that down even further. So obviously this is a very high level but it's a really good example of how you and your team can actually use types of brainstorming, visual representations of root cause analysis in order to really truly get an idea about how you can fix some of the possible causes that are creating some of the undesirable ex uh, effects on your project. And so really, I use this mostly for, for risk, but if you work in a manufacturing or environment where quality is really important, if you have too many defects, we have to work backward and try and figure out where in the process are things not working so we can fix the process. So hopefully you see the value in not only brainstorming with your experts, but utilizing the concept of a fishbone or Ishikawa diagram to really compartmentalize, to categorize, to really figure out what's the true root cause. Is it the most obvious, the proximate cause? Is there something that goes a bit deeper, an intermediate cause? Or is it on the organizational level? Because if we don't apply the best response to the actual root cause, then the risk or the quality problems will remain. So hopefully you enjoyed this blog and I'll see you next time. Hopefully I'll see you in class very soon. Thanks everyone.